Hi everyone, it's been a while since my last video. Unfortunately, I have some very, very hectic days. But nevertheless, in today's video, we're going to learn everything there is to know about the IP adapter. And what IP adapters allows you to do is to use images as conditioning, which results in similar images. And you can copy styles, you can copy characters, and you can copy faces. So let's not waste any more time and let's start adapting. So as always, we're going to start with the default workflow. Now, if you updated Comfy UI, and I suggest to you to always update Comfy UI, so we'll keep, you'll keep being updated with all the new nodes that are being released every day. Uh, and if you did update the Comfy UI interface lately, you probably noticed that the UI changed completely. You have a lot of new functions and features but it's really simple once you get used to it it might be a bit awkward at the first but once you get used to it it's really easy if for some reason you can't find the button of default workflow it's okay because now in order to go to the default workflow you can simply click here on the open workflow folders and just click x on the workflow that you're working on if you want to save it of course you can save it if you click uh, no and you don't open another workflow, it will automatically open the default workflow for you. And what we're going to do, we're going to replace the save image to a preview image. We're going to choose the Juggernaut model here. And let's give it something simple like a portrait photo of a beautiful woman next to a tree. And we'll leave the negative prompts for now as is let's do it 768 by 1280 and we will do 20 steps we will do 6.5 in the cfg we'll go with the dpm pp2m and the keras let's give it a run and see what kind of an image we're getting and this is the simplest possible uh, workflow when it comes to generating an image let's re let it run and then we'll build, build it up with the ip adapter nodes so we're back, it's done running, and you can see that we've got a very nice image of a woman hugging a tree. It looks like every other day image. The result is pretty nice, but this is not what we want. We want to control the styling of the image. So incoming IP adapter. IP adapter, basically, you can imagine it as a prompt embedment of styling or information from an existing image. So in order to do that, we will simply make sure that we have the IP adapter custom nodes installed. And in order to do that, we will simply click the manager button. And like always, we will go to the custom nodes manager. And here you will simply look for IP adapter. And then you will find the Comfy UI IP adapter plus. IP adapter plus is a much more simplified version of the IP adapter from the previous versions. I really encourage you to use it and it makes the entire process of using the IP adapter nodes really simple and really straightforward. Once you install it, of course, you will have to restart the interface. So do it and let's get right into it. And the first thing that we want to do is load the IP adapter node. So we will double click, we will write IP adapter and you can see here the IP adapter node which comes from the IP adapter plus, we will simply click it. I really like the fact that it shows you uh, a, ver uh, a preview of the node that you're about to add into the, into the workflow. So we're going to take this IP adapter and it requires several things to connect to it. And we are going to understand each of these properties. So the first thing that the IP adapter requires is a model. And this model basically is the IP adapter model itself. And if we'll search for the IP adapter, you will see that you have the IP adapter unified loader. And this allows you to load the corresponding model based on your needs. And you have several models here. Because we're using XL models, the first one and the last one that are Stable Diffusion 1.5 only are not relevant, but they work just the same as the other concept. So you have here the standard and you have the medium strength and you have the plus and you have the plus face. We're going to use the plus 
and because this is the most recent and the most optimized and effective model from the things that I played with. So we're going to, to choose the plus and here it needs to connect through the IP adapter to the IP adapter and to the image we're going to load our reference image using the load image node and here we will choose let's choose some kind of an image and let's say that this is the styling that we want to copy this is just a random image that i have and this will be the styling that we want to implement on top of our uh, woman portrait all we have to do now is connect the model to the model of the case sampler and this is basically it very simple very straightforward Let's give it a run as is and we'll see the results that we are getting. Oh, I did forget to connect the model from the checkpoint to the model into the IP adapter. And basically what happens behind the scene now is that the IP adapter takes the model and updates it kind of uh, an embedment of information, of weights, and it manipulates the model in a way that the end result will resemble the image that we provided as a reference and you can see the result here that we immediately got a very similar concept of an image let's move it here so we will have a better comparison you can see that the resulting image is very similar in styling and in colors and in overall looks and composition to the or read to the reference image that we provided but what happens if we don't want it to be precisely as the image we provided you can see that we lost completely the prompt that we entered we don't really see here a portrait photo of a woman we can see pretty much the same concept of an image and in order to change that we can simply go to the ip adapter itself and here you can see that we have a weight type and the weight type you have either standard prompt is more important and style transfer the standard is what you see. It tries to mimic the image that you provided when it comes to colors, to compositions, and almost everything. And the prompt is more important. will basically give more weight to the prompt itself. And any, if we will run the queue right now, you will see that it will still try to keep the styling of this image. And it will take note to the prompt and it will provide a much better image that suits the prompt that we provided let's take a look okay so now you can see that it tried to copy the colors and the composition style into the image but it still kept the prompt and the output coherent to what we asked for and we can see clearly that it's a portrait of a woman next to a tree now if we'll go to the style transfer what it will try to do is only copy the styling of the composition and leave the prompt as is many times the results of the style transfer and the prompt is more important are, are rather similar but when it comes to the style transfer it is a bit more strong when it comes to styling and composition and you can see here that it is it looks much more uh, water colored or uh, uh, the, the texturing and, and the styling of the image looks much more similar to the reference when it comes to the fine details so this is basically the difference now if we'll get back to the standard we also have here the weight if we'll put the weight on 1.25 for example and then we'll run it again it will give much less weight to the reference image and it will much more resemble the original prompt that we gave it at first so you see now that it, the, the styling of the image is barely visible let's just change it here to a fix give it another run so that we will see properly all the differences between runs that we're making and let's give it another run once again with a low weight of 0 0.25 which means that the impact of the reference image will, will be very low and you can see that you can hardly see you can see here and there some coloring of the image that resemble the color scheme of this image let's make it 0 0.5 and see the difference so you immediately see that now the impact of the reference image is much higher and it almost completely disregarded the um, prompt that said playing with the weight can give you amazing results and you see that overall the prompt 
still remains, even though we can hardly recognize a tree here, it is pretty obvious that it's a woman next to a tree. You can see here the branches. And if you'll play with the weights, you can get some very nice results from this IP adapter method. So you can see here that we only see hints of the styling, which gave a very interesting result to the prompt itself. This is basically it in a nutshell when it comes to using reference images for styling and things like that. But if you noticed before, we also have here something that's called plus face. What plus face does, it does the same job, but this time it only tries to mimic the facial features of the reference image that we give it. So let's give it a try. We'll, we'll, instead of this image, we will open up an image of a face. And what do you know? We have here this weird, bald dude with white beard staring at the camera. Okay, do note that I gave it a weight of, of 0.4, but you will see here that it copied the background here. And I, I gotta say that the result is a bit disturbing, but nevertheless, it did exactly what we expected it to do. But this time, instead of using the regular model, we will change it to the face and we will see the difference right away. So now looking at the results, you can see that it didn't affect the background as much. It did copy some of the coloring, I guess. But if you look here, you will see that it only tried to keep the influence of the reference image to the facial features. Let's go and give it a bit more weight. Let's do it 0.8 and run it once again. And we'll see if indeed it managed to create the feminine version of me. Uh, so it's done and I'm not sure how I feel about the image that it generated. And you can see as well that unlike the face swap that we did in previous videos, you can check it out um, in my channel. Unlike the face swapping, it did change completely the composition of the image and it tried to mimic some of the information here. Now you can use a node of image cropping directly on the workflow. So we will do it with the image crop. And this means that you can give it the image and extract it here. We will do a preview image and we will take this image as the reference image for the IP adapter. And this way we can crop it just to the area of the face. And let's do it like so. Uh, we will have to play with it until we get the correct um, cropping. So I will bypass the case sampler just to save time. And this is what we've got now. As you can see, it's not nearly close to where we want it to be. So let's do it like this until we find the correct area. And you can see that it will be much easier to crop it using a normal image editor. So now this will be the image that will be used as the IP adapters reference image. Let's return the node and give it another run. And let's see how it now affects the image that we're trying to generate. And you can see that even though we gave it a um, reference image that concentrates on the face, it still tried to mimic the background and so. And I think that this is one of the things where IP adapter is less effective, uh, unlike face swapping or things like that, because it really influences the entire image and not, and not only the facial features themselves. We can do something like prompt is more important and give it another run and we'll see how it will affect it. And you can see that now we did a better result and it affected more accurately the image that we are trying to affect. This is the more simple way of working with IP adapter. There are much more um, complex workflows and you can combine several ways to optimize the results. You can easily get to them using the manager. If you go to the manager, you will see here that there is the workflow gallery. There are several galleries that offer a lot of comfy UI workflows. Let's go even to the first one, the open art AI. And this website gives you a list. It's kind of an archive of many, many comfy UI workflows. And if you'll go to the search, you need to log in to be able to search 
if you go to the search and you type IP adapter, you'll find a, a lot of workflows that are a much more advanced workflow of the IP adapter. Things like using a control nets, using instant IDs, combining IP adapter with control nets and things like that. So I encourage you to play with the workflows and see how they work. This was a short introduction to the IP adapter plus, which gives you pretty much the main functionality and the core abilities of the IP adapter. And from here, you can only take it and make it much more usable to your needs. I really hope you like the video. If so, please like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye.